Hi everyone, today I would like to discuss about antipsychotics. Before going in detail about antipsychotics, first we must discuss about and what is meant by psychosis and schizophrenia. And study shows that about 1% of population is generally affected by an psychosis and schizophrenia. And various psychotic disorders includes schizophrenia, manic depressive illness, nothing but the persons prone to an mania as well as a depressive conditions. And third one is idiopathic psychotic illness, nothing but the cause is an unknown for this one. These are the three types of psychotic disorders. And coming to the schizophrenia, it is a particular kind of psychosis characterized mainly by a clear sensorium and but a marked thinking disturbances. Nothing but the concentration is uh, clear but there is a marked disturbances in your thinking parameters of a person is generally observed in a schizophrenia condition. Majorly in schizophrenia, mainly two regions of the brain is getting affected. One region is an hippocampus and the other one is an prefrontal cortex. These two regions of the brain is generally affected in a schizophrenia condition. So what is the major use of these two regions in the brain is hippocampus is responsible for a memory and learning whereas prefrontal cortex is responsible for working memory, paying attention and useful for organizing thoughts. Whenever the person prone to a schizophrenia condition due to the dysfunctioning of hippocampus and prefrontal cortex which leads to various changes in these uh, conditions we are observed as a symptoms in a schizophrenia. Various symptoms of schizophrenia majorly divide into two types. One is an positive symptoms, second one is an negative symptoms. These are the two types of symptoms of schizophrenia. One is positive and negative symptoms. What is positive symptoms are? We are added to the normal behavior of a person. The symptoms are added to normal behavior of a person. Whereas negative is nothing but we have to subtract from normal behavior. We can name it, say it as a negative symptoms. So what are the positive symptoms are? which is most commonly observed so one is hallucinations second one is delusions and next one is a disorganization of thoughts as well as a speech we as we are already know that hallucinations the person imagine or seeing or hearing something that is not there in reality generally it is shown in various movies the person feel and hallucinations and second symptom is delusions nothing but the film ideas and beliefs not found in reality is nothing but yeah, delusions and third one is disorganization thoughts and speeches these are added to a normal behavior of person this way we can name it as a positive symptoms and next one is a negative symptoms which can subtract from normal behavior nothing but the lack of interest to do any work and lack of responsiveness and the one is decreasing pleasure of daily activities so these are comes under the category of negative symptoms so generally in schizophrenia patients we have to observe positive as well as a no negative symptoms which includes hallucinations delusions disorganized thoughts and speech and lack of interest and lack of responsiveness and decrease in pleasure of daily activities Coming to the etiology of schizophrenia, what is the major cause for a schizophrenia? The etiology is clearly not known till now, but several factors they play an important role on onset of a schizophrenia conditions. The various factors includes there may be a genetic variations and next one is stressful live events and neurodevelopmental nothing but neurological factors and fourth one is an environmental causative factors. There is a no certain evidences for these factors, but the various scientists they have to identify that these four factors majorly uh, causes a schizophrenia condition. So mostly we are discussing here about in what are the neurological or neurodevelopmental factors which are involved in schizophrenia because it is a target for antipsychotic drugs. And here schizophrenia is majorly caused due to overactivity of dopaminergic neurons in the mesolimbic system. So what is dopamine is which is a type of excitatory neurotransmitter. The overactivity of this dopaminergic neurons in particularly in mesolimbic system of the brain ultimately leads to a condition known as a schizophrenia. So what is schizophrenia? How it occurs? Due to the overactivity of dopaminergic neurons in the mesolimbic system. So what is our target of antipsychotics is we have to reduce the overactivity of dopaminergic neurons and finally we have to reduce the schizophrenia condition. So uh, how they can say that overactivity of dopaminergic neurons it causes a schizophrenia is that is proposed by a theory or hypothesis we can name 
name it as dopamine hypothesis so how we can get in dopamine hypothesis is the erosion from observations by the use of antipsychotic drugs like chlorpromazine it is a type of an phenothiazine by the use of chlorpromazine in the years of 1950s they observed that they can majorly this drug is majorly affect the brain dopamine metabolism so Uh, how it affects the brain by dopamine metabolism uh, so because of the its effects on dopamine metabolism they can propose a theory known as a dopamine hypothesis so according to dopamine hypothesis what it suggests is the dopamine hypothesis of schizophrenia suggests that the disease result from increased dopaminergic neurotransmission as we are already discussed that what it states it disease results from increased dopaminergic neurotransmission and the approaches nothing but the treatment that decreases dopaminergic neurotransmission because of decreasing dopaminergic neurotransmission which can elevate the psychotic symptoms nothing but we can reduce the psychotic symptoms this is the statement suggested by an dopamine hypothesis what is dopamine hypothesis is the dopamine hypothesis majorly suggests that the disease nothing but schizophrenia which results from increase in the dopaminergic neurotransmission in the brain cells of mesolimbic system and that approaches nothing but antipsychotic drugs that decreases the dopaminergic neurotransmission and finally it elevate and uh, psychotic symptoms and the dopamine hypothesis further it is uh, evidences for that one is various other type of antipsychotic drugs along with an chlorpromazine those drugs also shows its action on a dopaminergic neurotransmission that is the evidence to support the dopamine hypothesis first they are used in chlorpromazine later on they are used various other types of antipsychotic drugs they are also targeted on dopaminergic neurotransmission finally they have to support the dopamine hypothesis of psycho schizophrenia but what happens in the dopamine hypothesis of schizophrenia is whatever the drugs which target the dopaminergic neurotransmission ultimately produces an extra pyramidal side effect this is very very important those drugs which shows an activities opposite actions on dopaminergic neurotransmission obviously produces an extra pyramidal side effects nothing but what is extra pyramidal side effects is which produces an parkinsons like symptoms nothing but simply it produces parkinsonism so such type of symptoms we can observe whenever we have to use an antipsychotics which targets an dopaminergic neurotransmission so that is correlates that which is why we are getting extra pyramidal side effects is because the those antipsychotic drugs which majorly shows its affinity towards an d2 receptors which are located in the brain cells so that's why we are observing an extra pyramidal side effects all these are the evidences to support the dopamine hypothesis So next one is the dopamine hypothesis of schizophrenia and pharmacotherapy involves the targeting of dopamine receptor. I already discussed that. So by the dopamine hypothesis only whatever the pharmacotherapy, nothing but drug treatment targeting the dopamine receptors, especially and D2 receptors are targeted because the D2 receptor is a type of an auto receptor. which is located on presynaptic nerve terminals of dopaminergic uh, nerve terminals which regulate the synthesis of an dopamine so that's why the d2 receptors targeting is involved in an antipsychotic treatment so later on other scientists they have to find out that in addition to these dopaminergic receptors various other types of receptors also plays an important role in the antipsychotic activity so such as adenosine histamine and serotonin so most probably in all the antipsychotics we are studied about the dopaminergic receptors so some of the other type of drugs also shows its action on adenosine histamine and serotonin because of these neurotransmitters also we have to observe uh, the psychosis effect they are also located on different parts of the brain and they also can modulate the dopamine synthesis by alterating the activity of an tyrosine hydroxylase so we are already studied the tyrosine hydroxylase is the enzyme which is helpful for the synthesis of an dopamine so this enzyme is modulated 
by the by this type of a neurotransmitter so finally by affecting this heterotype heteroreceptors automatically we can affect the dopamine synthesis and next other along with the adenosine histamine serotonin other types of receptors involved in the schizophrenia conditions are alpha 2 autoreceptors nothing but adrenergic receptors along with the adrenergic receptors other types of serotonin receptors like an 5ht2a and 5ht2c these are a type of g protein coupled receptors are also linked with an pathophysiology and treatment of a schizophrenia so ultimately the schizophrenia is majorly caused due to the over activity of a dopaminergic neurotransmission so which is in the brain especially in the mesolimbic system so then uh, major receptor which is targeted is d2 receptor along with the dopaminergic receptors other types of receptors which are involved in this one is and that receptors we can name it as heterose receptors one is adenosine histamine and serotonin in serotonin three types of receptors are involved one is 5ht1a along with the 5ht1a other types of receptors are also involved is 5ht2a and 5ht2c and along with that one adrenergic receptors like alpha 2 receptors all these receptors plays an important role in the pathophysiology and treatment of schizophrenia this is about a simple introduction about a psychosis as well as a schizophrenia thank you